Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. I'm just checking, and yep, it's all working, good. Lovely to see you all. This is Ask the Cheese Man, episode 154. And this is where you can ask your home cheese making questions. Uh, lovely to see everybody here. We've got, oh, what, it says 41, 42 on the, on the chat so far. I'm just looking at my monitor. So many pictures of me. Um, okay. So, first thing off the bat. Um, welcome back to everybody who's here. I can see there's lots of uh, lots of people that have previously been on the chat and lots of uh, new people as well, which is fantastic. Thank you all for coming. Um, there's no new YouTube members this week, but thank you to all the YouTube members. You can tell their YouTube members in the chat. They've got a little icon and their names are in green. Uh, and uh, we have Kim in the... Uh, chat. She is, is my wife and she's the moderator today. Uh, she'll be keeping all the naughty people away. Uh, patrons, new patrons this week. We've got William Rumble. Thank you, William, for your patronage. Colin Barnes. Thank you, Colin, for your patronage as well. And Ron Todd Hunter. Thank you, Ron, for your patronage. And thanks to everybody who should... Sh Everybody who supports the show financially and uh, without you guys and girls, curd nerds and curd nerdettes, there would be no show. Um, really does uh, uh, help pay the bills around here. So thanks so much and keep the show on the air. Okay, with well that said, uh, thanks to everybody else, even if they don't pay, um, watching the videos certainly helps support us because... All those ads, pre-roll, mid-roll, and end-roll ads that you see on the YouTube videos, uh, YouTube actually gives us a little bit of a cut. Um, so everybody who watches a video is essentially a financial member as far as I'm concerned. So thanks so much. So videos this week, um, coming up... Hang on, I've just got to sort out a dog. Get into bed, Ted. Into bed. Good boy. Good... <laughs> Boy. Right, and Holly, where are you? Come on, up here. Come on, up. Good girl. I've got Holly the cheese dog in the background. Oh, it's all happening here. What was I talking about? Oh, videos this week. So, uh, to be released in a couple of days is uh, Creme Fresh, which is a, a dairy product, uh, more of a dairy product than a cheese. So that'll go up, that'll go up soon. Uh, it's already out, released for members and patrons. Uh, early access um, yesterday and today I'm working on uh, Appenzella which is a Swiss style uh, cheese which is washed in white wine and some herbs and spices uh, so that'll be a while before it hits the channel because uh, I want to show at least uh, two weeks into the maturing process so people can get a feel for what they have to do uh, and hopefully we'll see some colour change on the rind as well. Uh, today I'm filming a video about uh, five different types of flavoured butters. Uh, I have the cream, so I will be doing that as well. Um, and another announcement, the Little Green Workshops channel got a, uh, a major announcement on it the other day. I'll just put the link into the chat. Let's have a look. Where is it? The channel. Yeah. So there's the link to the channel for Little Green Workshops. Um, we, uh, I did a major announcement. We've actually stopped doing face-to-face, face-to-face uh, -face workshops now due to COVID and our business growth. Um, and you can go and check out. There's a video that's just recently been um, released. So. Uh, we're going to attempt, fingers crossed and time permitting, uh, get a tutorial up on that channel every week. Not necessarily cheese. Um, we do lots of things at Little Green Workshops. Cheese is just one of the 
uh, the hobbies or um, uh, crafts that we support. Um, so yeah, there'll be lots of stuff there. And hopefully at 8.30, I've got my alarm set, we've got some photos in the gallery. So that'll be good fun too. So that's what's happening in the show. Uh, as well as everybody answering, answering their questions. But before we get questions asked, um, we have some people that we've got to say day to. Holly, sit down. Holly. Oh, good girl. She's lying down. I'm looking... <laughs> oh. I was looking at the replay, which is delayed by 30 seconds. Anyway, uh, I'll move right along. Uh, so, g'day to... What's that? Chating? Chating? Chatending? I think that's how you say it. G'day, mate. Uh, Cease. G'day, Cease. How are you? Uh, Baz, Baz, man. Uh, Jesse. G'day, Jesse. Uh, Sandro. Ambrose. G'day, Ambrose. Probably a little bit earlier for you the, the today, which is good. And I think when you guys go to, or finish Daylight Savings, it'll even be an hour earlier, I think. Yes, I think that's how it works. Ruth, g'day Ruth. Uh, lovely to see you here from, what's that, Smoky and Hot San Francisco? Yeah, I heard about all the fires. Not good, not good at all. Um, that random guy in the corner. Kevin, g'day Kevin. Green Plums. Larry from Deep South Texas, g'day. Nicola, g'day mate. Windwolf Alpha, g'day mate. Sondre, hello Sondre, I think that's how you say it. Aga, g'day mate. Uh, who else we got? Kim, obviously. Charlie, g'day Charlie, love to see you. Harriet, Mary Ann, g'day Mary Ann. Uh, Gary, uh, Barry, we got all the Arries. Uh, Karen, g'day Karen. Um, Asthma, g'day Asthma. Who else we got? Trainee. Uh, Brug and JD, g'day JD, uh, Monique and uh, Miriam, g'day Miriam. Um, so hello to everybody in the chat. I've got to the bottom, that's amazing. So let's get on and uh, do some questions. Hopefully I've got some. Um, let's have a look. Yes, we have a question here. Please make a renewed Gruyere tutorial uh, man the quality is okay but leaves a bit to be desired make your own tutorial feel that way um, no uh, no I'm, I'm not going to repeat Gruyere uh, I think the tutorial stands on its own two feet really uh, and there's been a lot of people who have made Gruyere from that tutorial um, I don't tend to remake many of the cheeses unless the original video was dismal, um, which I've done with uh, Parmesan and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Cotswold and what's the other? Kefili is the other one that I've made a remake um, because the original videos were like from 2014 or something. Um, and just on that note, um, the YouTube channel uh, Gavin Webber, which everybody has here. Um, is the first video I uploaded was 11 years ago, about a week ago, if that makes sense. So it's 11 years old. Uh, it was actually up for a bit longer than that, probably six months before that, where I had some other really crappy videos up that are all copyright strikes, so I took them out. Um, but the very first cheese making video was put up on this channel 11 years ago. So. Happy birthday to the Gavin Webber YouTube channel. Uh, and it's come a long way since then, that's for sure. Um, I'll only do remakes of videos if the if I have improved the recipe and I know it's a, 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 um, a proper improvement to the recipe um, so people can, can make that one instead of the old one. Um, but that's really the only time I'm going to do that. I have been um, hemming and hawing as to whether I redo the uh, the mozzarella, quick mozzarella video, because the quality of that is pretty bad, even though I think that's my most viewed video at the moment. So I think if I do another one of those, uh, just to make it clear for people, and maybe use liquid rent at this time instead of tablets, it'll make it a bit easier for people. Because the most frequently asked question on the channel is, I made quick mozzarella and it didn't work. How do, how do you, can you fix, can you help me? 
Um, so yeah, I'll probably do a couple of versions and uh, make some uh, mistakes that I know are easy to make in that recipe and show people how to do that. Okay, um, Jesse says, Hi Gavin, I have had some homemade cheddar aging in my fridge in a vacuum saver bags for five months. Uh, should I wait longer since the temp is colder or is it okay now? Uh, well, a good thing about the vacuum packing bag is you can rip it open, cut it open and have a little bit of a taste and if it tastes okay, I'm ready to go. Um, five months would be okay, I think. Uh, because it's colder, yeah, it may take longer to develop the flavours. You're right there, that's for sure. But the good thing is you can re-vacuum pack it and age it longer if you want. Uh, I've got lots of bits of cheese in the um, uh, in the cheese fridge uh, that um, uh, that <laughs> sorry <laughs> the super chat from Ruth. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, lots of bits of cheese in the cheese fridge that are, I've decided to age for longer. So they're just pieces of cheese in uh, vacuum packing. Okay, uh, Ruth does have a super chat there. So. Uh, her question, and thank you, Ruth, for your $20 super chat and uh, making the curd, alert, curd nerd light flash. Uh, medical emergency interrupts a large marble cheddar. Had to leave two big pots at point of clean break. Returned to it 24 hours later. It was 77 degrees. Cut and cooked briefly. Now trying to drain. Uh, advice, predictions, thanks. Um... So the curd hadn't been cut. All right, you probably would have had a fairly decent pool of whey on top. Um, I don't know, I think the curd will be quite firm. Uh, and you probably found when you cooked it briefly that the, um, uh, the curds would have shrunk a lot quicker because there's more acid in the cheese. So even though it was sitting at a clean break stage, the whole mass was solid. Uh, and the lactobacteria obviously has had an extra 24 hours to work. 77 degrees? I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Hey Siri. C convert 77 Fahrenheit to Celsius. 77 degrees Fahrenheit is 25 degrees Celsius. 25. Yeah, alright. So there will be, would have been some more acid development, Ruth. You may find my prediction, I suppose, is that it will be <clears throat> more crumbly than usual. Uh, if your cheddars aren't really crumbly at about the three to six month mark, I think this one probably will be uh, because of the extra acid development. So that's my prediction. And thank you for your kind super chat. Okay, moving right along. Um, okay, next question is from... Uh, Ruth's bagel recipe uh, um, from Kevin. So I'll let um, Kevin and Ruth sort that out. Um, please don't put your email address in the um, in the chat. It's just you'll get spammed from automatic spammers from God knows where. Sandre says, um, "Hi Gavin, how come you don't include pH marks in your video? I thought pH were very important at different points during the make." Uh, but I never see you mention about it. Cheers. Yeah, good question, Sandre. Um, let me just take a sip of coffee and have a think about that. <clears throat> have another sip. Okay. So, um, all the recipes that I make, and even though some are um, advanced ones, as far as I'm concerned, they take a bit more time, I try and make it for the lowest common denominator so what I mean by that is I'm trying to make them so that beginners can at least have a go at them and not have to worry too much about the technical side of cheese making you're 100% right yes if you were in a commercial operation you would check the pH and know what it's supposed to be at various stages of the cheese making process However, for the home cheese maker, who's probably only going to ever make one or maybe two or three of the same style of cheese, the style of recipe that I produce 
is in line with most uh, home cheese making books. There are rarely any mentions of pHs uh, in those recipes either. Uh, you'll probably find, uh, yeah, there are pH uh, points or markers listed in Giannoclus Caldwell's book, The uh, the Artisan Cheese Maker, yeah, Making Artisan Cheese, uh, which is the more technical book out of the two she's produced. Um, and sometimes when I'm trying to make a different sort of recipe, I'll, I'll have a look at her book first, check what the pH rating should be, and then try and create a home cheese maker's recipe that makes it easier. I did that with the, um, uh, the fake camembert, which is the way that a lot of people make camembert in the commercial world outside of France, of course, um, with a stabilized paste. So I did use pH markings for that if it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, so to make it a simple answer is to make it easier for people. Uh, and they will end up with a pretty good cheese as you know we've attested to many times in gallery photos. Anyway, moving right along. Um, Harriet from Manitoba. G'day Harriet, I haven't seen you here before. Or I might have and I've missed you, but hello Harriet. Um, Karen has a question. She says, I had house guests last week and lost control of cleaning my Gruyere. It got quite fuzzy. Uh, can I save it? Glad to see you both. Uh, yeah, look, I think you can save it, Karen. Just the old brine wash um, and give it a bit of a rub. The it depends on how long uh, in the development of the Gruyere it is. Um, if it's been aging for a while, then yeah, you shouldn't have too many problems because the rind will be quite hard. Uh, so yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be quite interesting. We've got a new member, which is great to see. Uh, Jonathan Moss, thank you for your membership, Jonathan. Um, if you're not watching the live stream, but yeah, you can randomly do that without being on the live stream. But yeah, thanks, Jonathan. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, so just wipe it down and uh, the rind should be fairly brown or darker than before if you've been washing it properly, Karen. Uh, I don't think there'll be any issues unless you really have got blue mold that has got into any cracks and stuff like that, then you'll get a little bit of a different flavor. Okay. Um, Kevin says, uh, Gav, your cheese wrapping skills are horrendous. Uh, get a store bought camembert and open carefully, then deconstruct it and try that way. Oh, thanks, Kevin, for the uh, vote of confidence there, mate. Um, look, the just truth be known, those store bought camemberts, most of them are wrapped by machines. They're not wrapped by humans like yours truly and, and yourself. Um, so, yeah, I suppose I could do that. But then I'll be trying to replicate how a machine does it. But uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, Matt says, hello from over the ditch. G'day, Matt. I assume that's New Zealand. Um, Brug says, happy Sunday morning to Australia. Have just made long processed mozzarella and it's getting slimy in the lightly salted whey brine. Is there a recipe for a better brine? Uh, Bruce from New Jersey in the USA. Um, uh, probably no. Uh, the, the brine that you've got is probably okay. Uh, it just needs a little bit of acid added to it. So add a little bit of uh, vinegar uh, and you'll find that it stops making the cheese go slimy uh, because it's not trying to exchange calcium ions between the, the brine and the, the cheese. So a little bit of calcium chloride will fix that. A little bit of vinegar will fix that in your brine. Um, if you have a look at, uh, what's the best one? Uh, if you look at the real Greek feta or the traditional Greek feta recipe video, Kim, if you can put that up, that'll be great. Um, you'll find that there's a 10% brine solution, which is probably ideal for your mozzarella that you've got floating in there. Um, and th that would work okay. Um, Karen says, uh, yay, Appenzella. And Ruth then says, yay, Appenzella. Uh, because I actually got the right idea from Ruth because um, I had been hesitant about that recipe because I couldn't find a uh, spice mix uh, for the for the rub or the wash 
Um, but Bruce pointed me in the right direction. A couple of recipes that do mention what sort of spices Appenzella uses. So I bit the bullet and made the cheese. It's in the press at the moment. I've got to take it out and put it in the brine later after the, this episode. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, Barry says, I added four tablespoons of salt to a Colby recipe recently. Later, I realized it should have been four teaspoons. Uh, will aging this cheese longer help break down the extremely salty cheese? Thanks from Tucson. Uh, no, it won't, Barry. Salt stays there forever. It won't. It'll be very, very salty. Four, t yes. Yes. So... Uh, it will mature. Okay, maybe even the um, the lactobacteria will be stifled by that amount of salt as well. So that'll be a bit of a problem. Uh, look, probably the best to age it and 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 make age it in a way that it's going to dry out uh, a bit like a parmesan and then use it as a grating cheese because you won't be able to eat it as a sliced cheese because it'll just be way too salty. Um, but yeah, we all learn from our mistakes, Barry. I've done similar things where I've added uh, not enough salt or way too much salt. So, you know, live and learn is all I can say. Um, JD says, um, do you plan to make some awesome German hand case with music? It's uh, a specialty uh, from Frankfurt. Um, oh, I'll put that down as a suggestion. I think I've got a recipe somewhere. Uh, hand case. Or is that Kaiser? Yeah, hand Kaiser. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so that's on the list. We'll um, we'll have a look, see if I can find a recipe. I think I've got one somewhere in one of the books that I ha own. But we'll give it a go. Um, Asma says, I can't find fresh heavy cream where I live. Only ultra heated plus clotted cream, what can I use? Unfortunately, uh, if it's UHT cream, you won't be making too many of the cream style recipes that I do. If, even, if you add UHT cream to uh, fresh milk as well, that, that kind of stops the, um, the curd from setting. So, bit of a dilemma. Not sure what you could do there. Um, Karen, no, Karen asked, Ruth, can you share what herbs you used in yours? Um, uh, yeah, uh, she's got it here somewhere. We'll have a look in a minute. Um, so we'll get to that in a sec. Um, uh, JD says, hand, hand casa is a sour milk cheese. Uh, yeah, all right, we'll check that out. Uh, Kevin says Sage Der Derby, uh, Derby, sorry Derby, Sage Derby is ready to open tomorrow. If it is, uh, if all is good, you will have a photo next week. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, that'll be great for the gallery. Not quite there yet. Got seven minutes to go before the gallery comes. Um, Peter says hello from Belgium and um, uh, Miriam says hello from Dubai. G'day, both of you. Um, Windwolf Alpha says, I'm down at El Cajon in California. It's even smokier than a cowboy's barbecue pit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Captain Vegas says, G'day, Gav. Finally, happy to finally catch you live. G'day, mate. How are you? Uh, it's great to see you. And uh, you've been a, a staunch supporter of the channel ever since I can't remember when. But thanks, Captain Vegas. Lovely to see you on the chat. Um mitochondria says in your opinion what uh sorry would you recommend investing in a ph meter or are ph strips good enough for the everyday cheese maker um yeah look if you're going to get serious about cheese making as in like make lots of it then yeah invest in a ph a good ph meter not one of those ones that um that you can manage the uh, you can measure the water in your fish tank you want something with a probe uh, that you can push into the curds. Um, so it's got to be for measuring solids. So there are dairy making pH meters, uh, which are quite expensive. Some are over $150. I've seen some up to $600 Australian, which is a lot. Um, but 
for the home cheese maker, look, I think pH test strips are fine. That's what I use. It seems to work all right. Um, certainly haven't had any issues lately when I've used pH strips. At least it tells me. And the, the, the ones that we sell are calibrated specifically for the cheese maker. They're not like litmus paper, which goes from um, 0 to 14 in the pH scale. These ones are specific, uh, made, specifically made for the small increments that cheesemakers need and in that range for cheesemakers. So, uh, Kevin asks, what is the difference between Geo Candidum 13, 15 and 17? Uh, they're all different strains of moulds. So, even though they're called Geo Trichum, they actually, under a microscope, they all look different. They all have different properties. Uh, I don't know, this, I can't remember the specifics, but one of them is more mushroomy uh, than the others. Uh, another one is more salt tolerant, uh, and another one is gives you more earthy flavours. But all are white moulds, um, but yeah, they're different strains. So you can actually um, have a quick Google there, Kevin, because I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, they they have purposes within the cheese making process. Uh, as for the geo strain that I use, that I've got. I actually don't know what it is, so that's pretty bad on my behalf, but it works and uh, seems to have no issues in, in when I use it in cheese making. Um, Megan McIntyre says, happy birthday to your channel. Uh, thanks so much for putting these together. I've learned so much from watching. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate it. Um, yes, happy birthday to the, um, to the channel indeed. Uh, Leonidas, and great to see you here, Leonidas, because Leonidas is a big supporter of the um, of the vlog channel, which is still going strong. I put up a very funny uh, vlog last night called The Cheese and the Huntsman, um, which is not a reference to um, Snow White and the Huntsman. You'll have to go and watch it. Uh, but if you're an arachnophobe, uh, then, yeah, don't watch it, maybe. Uh, but yeah, it's it's quite interesting. Get a little bit of behind the scenes of the uh, Appenzella that I was making yesterday, uh, and you'll get to see a bit of a uh, a hunt for a a, a very furry looking spider. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Leonidas uh, says, "I'm not a cheesemaker, but pH strips are good enough for me as a home brewer, so they should be fine for you. Beer is pretty touchy to pH, and that is uh, good comment there, Leonidas." Peter says, just made a Tilsit and some Camembert today. Well, good luck with those. Hope they turn out all right. Um, the maturation period of those two cheeses is particularly, well, not taxing. Camembert is quite easy. Once it gets fur on it, you just wrap it and put it in the fridge and they should be fine. Tilsit is another beast. You've got to keep washing it with the Brevi bacterial linens wash a few times and then just a, a brine but just keep an eye on it they do it will develop mold quite quickly uh, but uh, it should be right peter you've done a great thing slacky mcgee <laughs> says hello gav uh do you use tap or non-chlorinated water when washing the curds uh yes i use non-chlorinated water in fact i washed some curds yesterday in that appenzella recipe uh wasn't a lot of wash, but yeah, I use non-chlorinated water. I find if you use chlorinated water or tap water, uh, it tends to um, a light blow, which is it creates big fissures in the cheese. I found that before, but um, uh, yeah. So, and I don't know if it's the chlorine killing off the, uh, the the lactic bacteria or something else in the tap water. But when I use non-chlorinated water, I don't get those fissures in the cheese. Um, you can prevent that by using um, Lysolac, which is an egg white product. Very hard to get your hands on. Um, it's big in Europe for Euro some European cheeses, but uh, I haven't seen it here in Australia for sale at, say, a home cheese maker shop. I've been trying to get my hands on some so I can repackage it for people, but... Uh, the companies I talk to, they're all multinational conglomerates um, and really they're, they're very hard to do business with. Very hard. Anyway, moving right along. Ruth says she had a seven hour nosebleed, uh, but I'm okay, thank God. Oh, sorry for that, Ruth. 
hope you're okay so you seem to be um but yeah i'm glad oh it's 8 30 hang on just one last question from monique monique says hi from australia hi everybody hi gav i know stilton is a process to make is the stilton video make ages ago the only one or can i do the petite blue as a big one and see how i go uh, the Stilton video I made ages ago is the only one that I've made. Uh, lots of people have made Stilton successfully using that recipe. I wouldn't use the Petite Blue one. It's That one is designed for a smaller cheese and to make the internals go a little bit runny, whereas a Stilton is obviously not runny in the middle. It's a lot firmer. Uh, it's quite creamy, but it's a lot firmer than um, the Petite Blue, so I wouldn't use that recipe. Use the original old one. Or try and find a good one in a book. Okay, uh, yes. So gallery. Let's uh, let's bring up the gallery photos. Uh, move over to desktop number one, two, two. There we are. Is it working? Nope. My stream cam is not. That's better. Second monitor. I don't know why that didn't work. It's sideways. How do I make that go the other way? There we go. That's better. All right, this one is from um, Cease, who's in the chat today, I think. Um, and this is her dry jack. Uh, and she's got a little part of her recipe there. There's a little bit of a hint. So this is a, um, a rubbed jack. I'm not sure what it's coated with, um, but she made it, looks like, the 9th of August. Looks like it there. But it looks spectacular, so it's a really good-looking cheese. All right, thanks for sending that photo in, Cease. The next photo is from Herb, and Herb has a, what's that, an Asiago uh, made from raw Jersey milk, and that's a lovely colour, magnificent, uh, and a good shaped looking cheese. I like the bulges on the sides, um, as they do tend to, because it's quite, um, uh, it's quite a soft cheese, um, but yeah, it looks really good. Uh, this is also from Herb, and it is a Cotswold with peppercorns, uh, and that's from uh, raw Jersey milk as well. Uh, I love the way that he's written the um, how long, so when he made it, and to when he's going to eat it, <laughs> and the type of culture that, he's, that he used in the cheese. So that's always a good one if you want to try and repeat your successes and avoid your failures, is to write all that down, which is what I do, though I write my recipes out in my, in my little pad book here. And um, yeah, and it's good to see that he's written the weight as well. So that's cool. And uh, there's a Cotswold that he's made and that's got peppercorns in it too by the looks of it. Uh, and that looks spectacular, amazing looking Cotswold. Uh, okay, I think we've got some more. Here's one from Ruth. Uh, this is Ruth's cloth banded cheddar. Uh, looks very nice indeed. I uh, don't know if you've cracked into that one yet, Ruth. You could probably let us know in the comments. But that is a great looking cheese. And this is sideways. What the heck is this? Oh, this is Ruth's as well. This is her Gruyere. I love the brown colour, which is, uh, Gruyere's tend to go anyway. Mine certainly did, but it's a lovely, large looking specimen. Um, and uh, apparently it was a winner. So Ruth tells me. And there's the outside of the Gruyere there. Let's see, are there any more? And last but not least, I think this one's been recently made. What's that, 26th and the 9th? Yeah, it has. Uh, and this is a, um, a raclette that Ruth has made, rather large. Uh, but that'll be getting washed, I think. And that'll be amazing. But I think that's it for the gallery. So thank you. Uh, no, well, that's not working properly. Go back to that. Thank you very much, everybody, for... Uh, your gallery photos. If you've got gallery photos and you want to send them in for the next episode, then uh, please do so. Send them through to the email that's listed in the About tab of the channel. So go to the channel page, Gavin Weber, and there's an About tab. Click on that and you'll see there's an email address there. You'll have to prove that you're not a robot. And then you can send me an email with your pictures <clears throat> for the gallery so if you want to do that then dig out i love showing everybody's photos and it gives me a sense of uh pride and accomplishment on 
you know, and it, and it helps motivate me to make more video tutorials for cheese makers. People really do enjoy them and they seem to make the cheeses off them. But anyway, it's very good. Thanks very much. <clears throat> okay. Next question is uh, from Kevin. Kevin said, made a Caprino Romano uh, in matte box two weeks and the rind is just turning a beautiful orange. Is this okay? Um, is it, it's turning orange. Uh, it's a goat's milk Romano. So I would tend to think that it's probably been infected with uh, bee linens. So I'd wash the rind until it goes touch dry and then just brush the rind. Um, let it dry out a little bit more too, I think. But yeah, it, orange is a beautiful orange is not necessarily a good thing because it'll start to smell as well. So anyway, hopefully it works out for you, Kevin. Um, John says, buggers, no notification. Finally online after many months and it isn't 3 p.m. Uh, that's all right, John, you made it. And it was an hour earlier, so that's fantastic. Um, Nicholas says... Uh, the chlorine shouldn't matter in the water, but there are other stuff and you should boil it first. Yeah, indeed. Um, and Kim's saying, I hope you're feeling better, Ruth. Yes, I hope you're feeling better, Ruth. I, I didn't mention that, but uh, it's never great to have a seven hour nosebleed. So I hope, hope you're OK. Um, uh, Lactobacillus Prime says, good evening from Leodarm in the Netherlands. G'day, Lactobacillus. Love to see you. Um, Ruth says, how can I connect to send the bagel recipe? Um, uh, let me just think. I'm not sure. Um, uh, maybe you could post it on the uh, Little Green Cheese Facebook page. Ruth is probably the best way to do it. Uh, just send send a post put a post in that and then i'll share the post and that'll be there for everybody i think it's probably the easiest way um she was in uh, ruth says she was in the er for five hours and she was well taken care of thought my brain was draining out through my nose but the brain is not connected <laughs> uh okay so that's thanks ruth for the vivid um description of what was going on Whew. uh john says um uh, was it one of those COVID Q-tip spears they slam up against the blood brain barrier uh, and the pineal gland? Oh, I hope it wasn't. That's not good. Um, uh, Ruth says, Google me and you will get my website. That has my email on it. Email me for the ba bagel recipe. What a genius. Well done, Ruth. I knew you'd come up with a solution somewhere. Average Dragon says, maybe he could use that overly salted cheese in some sort of pasta. Yeah, that kind of, that was my, um, uh, my thought, but maybe over pasta as grating, but in some, you could make a pasta sauce, uh, and like a cheesy sauce, and you wouldn't have to add any salt whatsoever. So Average Dragon, good idea, mate. Um, Average Dragon says, what cheese making books are your favourites besides keep calm and make cheese, of course? Um... Oh, I haven't got it with me. It's um, one of my favourites for finding simple recipes that are straightforward, easy, ex easily explained, but sometimes they don't have everything you need, is from uh, Deborah Amron's Boys, and it's called 200 Easy Cheese Making Recipes. I don't even think it's in print at the moment, but if you can get your hands on one, that is one of my favourites. The other one is from, let me see, have I got it here? My other favourite that just has base, uh, not basic, isn't they're not. It's called Mastering Artisan Cheese Making uh, by Gianna Clis Caldwell. There's a name down there. Um, I think she's in the northwest of uh, the US, and this is uh, the ultimate guide for home scale and market producers. Um, there are some great recipes, and if you really want the science of making cheese this book really does explain it very very well so 
Mastering Artisan Cheese Making by Gianna Claus Caldwell. There we go. So, on the bookshelf. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the two that I'd recommend for the beginner, for sure. Uh, oh, as well as Kit Car Make Cheese, of course. I think it's a very good beginner's, beginner's book. Um, Andrew says, have you ever heard of Pinconning Cheese? It's from Pinconning, Michigan in the US, and it's very similar to Colby. In fact, it is Colby. It's an aged Colby. Uh, I have heard of it. I haven't made one. I haven't aged a Colby more than, I think, three months tops because they're so yummy and you just can't wait. Um, but yeah, pink conning is basically an aged Colby cheese. <clears throat> uh, Sandro says, hi. Hi, Sandro. Um, Peter says, here is a challenge. Voted best cheese in the world some years ago. And that's... Uh, how do you pronounce that? A actuallys actual actual C blue. Uh, I'll have a look, but I don't know if I'll take up the challenge. <laughs> um, I'm writing it down though. Right, thank you very much, Peter. I'm not going to take up the challenge, but we'll see. Um, Ruth says, Jim Wallace says on his North East cheese making, where I got one recipe, is that the wash is a secret conco concoction, which is domain only, which means we can invent our own magic potion. Uh, yeah, indeed. So some of the, what, what I was going to use, some of the herbs, uh, herbs and, I was going to use, <coughs> herbs and spices. So I was going to use cinnamon, uh, I was going to use, oh, what the heck, I can't remember, I wrote them down, um, but yeah, I'm going, once I do it, I will, when I do that recipe, I will say that, Ruth, because definitely everything I've read, it's a, gar a closely guarded secret there in Switzerland, um, so I am going to make my own herb and spice mix for the wash, hopefully it impart some flavour, um, but yeah, they'll be nice. So there'll be cinnamon, all that sort of stuff in as well. And I think you've listed down here what you used. Uh, you used for your Appenzella was, um, what's that? My favorite palette. I use my favorite palette, cream sherry with cinnamon sticks, ginger root clumps, cardamom, uh, all spice clove and on the sweet end, everybody loved it. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah, you can use you can use white wine as they suggest, but you can use um, a fortified wine as well, which may add a little bit more flavour to it. Alrighty, um, Roxy says um, cheese making seems easy, but at the same time it isn't. Yeah, yeah, with experience, everything. Um, uh, I, with experience, everything becomes easier and not easy uh, because you learn from your mistakes uh, Megan says I'm not sure if it's because I'm looking on my iPhone but I cannot find the email for the gallery on the about tab is there somewhere else I can find it I'd like to send pics of cheese you've inspired um, let me think um, you could yeah if you went to um, littlegreencheese.com uh, Megan, there is a contact me form. You can shoot me an email from there and then I can reply back and we can exchange pictures. That's another way to do it. Um, yeah, so littlegreencheese.com. I think I've got it. Yeah, there it is, down there. In the in the title bar-y thing. Um, okay, uh, Misty says, how's your wife doing? I'll let her reply back to that, Misty. Um, she's uh, She's doing fine. So I'll let her reply back. Um, Witty Geeky says, I'm willing to have a cheese factory. I need your advices in the near future. Thanks. Uh, thank you much for your help. Uh, I'm afraid I won't be much help with a cheese factory because I've never built one and I don't have one. I'm a home cheese maker giving home cheese making advice, not cheese factory advice. You'll have to go to find a professional who's done it before unfortunately um kevin says making fake camembert as we speak and before i put the rennet in my 
in my pH was 5.5 and 5.8 is that okay Kevin I don't have the recipe in front of me right now unfortunately uh, I don't know it sounds quite acidic but hey, let me think normal milk is about 6.6 .6, so it's not far off the rat it does have a high pH to start with to help break the proteins down so yeah I think so keep going <clears throat> uh, Francis says hello I love the vlog I work in very remote locations around the world what cheeses are easy to make with shelf stable dairy there's only two that come to mind um, with UHT milk you can make uh, a really basic ricotta it won't be very smooth it'll be quite rubbery uh, you can also make a basic paneer um, so there are recipes for the um, for home uh, for sweet ricotta Kim if you can find that link and pop that up that'll be great thanks love and the uh, paneer video as well and that'll help out Francis um, Ruth says my dry jack came out spectacular we aged it for a year it looks really good um, yeah indeed thanks Ruth uh, ch -ch -ch. let me have a look oh. um, okay so people are commenting about the photos Kevin says you can get Lysolac from a company in the Netherlands called Bio uh, um, Sutika okay yeah I'll have a look they'll probably have to send it out There we are. Sorry, it's it's back again. I don't know what's going on. We're connected. I don't know why that did that, but uh, yeah, sorry about that. It's uh, we're having some issues. Anyway, we've got a, we've got a, it's all happening here now. We've got a super chat as well from Patricia. G'day, Patricia. Lovely to see you. Yeah, hopefully people don't drop off because they saw that no signal thing. I don't know what was going on with the camera. It's having a bad hair day, I think um thank you patricia i'll just kill the light no i can't kill the light hang on goodness me we have to do everything manually today we're having bad hair days there we go and to kill that manually sorry about that everything's locked up on my pc so Patricia, thank you for your $5 Canadian Super Chat. Your question is, my Tilsit Ryan didn't close very well after pressing under its own weight. Should I worry about being able to wash the rind or just vacuum pack it instead? Um, yeah, if the, rind, if the rind's got cracks or fissures in it, then really you want to do the wash. You really want to do the wash or it's not going to be a Tilsit at all. It'll be a lovely soft cheese and develop some nice flavours. But look, I'd wash it for at least two weeks, Patricia. See what happens. Hopefully you won't get any like blue mould growth and stuff like that. White mould, get into the cracks. If you start to see that happening and you're happy with the rind as it is, then yeah, vacuum pack it after that. But give it a bit of a wash because you need those flavours from the bee linens and the extra brine really do help that cheese develop and make it taste amazing but thanks for your super chat patricia okay moving right along and hopefully we won't have any more technical issues i don't think we have we got sound i can't see hang on oh no it's there uh, can someone let me know if they can hear me? Because I don't have any indication of sound. A 
La la la. I don't know. I can't tell if it's working or not. Oh, we're having all sorts of issues today. So Kim, if you if you can hear me, uh, let me know if you can hear me. Oh, we are 10, 10, 10. Yes, okay, great, thank you. Fantastic, right. It's all working, there's a bit of a delay. Right, yeah, it's, uh, my software's really crapped out, so that's probably why everything's going crazy. Anyway, back to the questions. We've got 10 minutes, 10 minutes to go. Um, right, sorry about that, folks, for the technical difficulties. I don't know why it's happening. I have no sound output on my software, so I can't tell if it's working, but it looks like it is, so it's great. Okay, um, uh, last question was from Kevin. Yes, Lysolac, excellent, thanks for the suggestion, Kevin. Uh, Sergio says, has anybody tried culturing cheese with kefir milk? I think a lot of people are made kefir, uh, it's very good. Um, Kevin says, the caprino, uh, caprino has a very strong odor, indeed, it will from the V-Lens, Kevin. Uh, Ruth says, love seeing everybody's pics, inspiring and makes me feel like we are really working together. Uh, means a lot to me during the pandemic. Thanks, everybody. Indeed it is, Ruth. That's why I love showing everybody's pictures. It really does. Uh, it's, it's exciting for me, too, to see the fruits of your labor, which is excellent. Now, no, that's not working. Oh, hang on. I've got to turn the curd nerd lamp off manually. Whew. It's all happening. Thanks, Patricia. You got another question. It's great. I use 10 litres of milk to make the Tilsit as two small cheeses rather than large, one large. Do you think the Affinage team time needs to be changed with the smaller cheeses? Uh, yes, Patricia, I do. Uh, you, I would reduce the Affinage time by about a month. Maybe you get a smaller volume of cheese, it'll mature quicker as well. So you won't need to wait as long. I can't remember, what the, I think it was six to eight weeks. I can't remember the recipe off the top of my head, but yeah, reduce the time, the amount of time. Try at least one of them um, as you're going along about a month earlier and see. It's a very mild tasting cheese. A um, little bit on the nose, but it's it's a lot milder than what um, uh, some of the stronger cheeses like uh, Limburger and stuff like that. But the paste is, is absolutely delightful. But yes, you're right. Smaller cheeses, less ripening time. Um, uh, Trent says, reg question regarding today's episode, that yucky spider, is it harmful or poisonous to humans? Uh, it can bite you, but it's not harmful to, to, um, uh, to humans. Uh, we're talking about the, um, the cheese and the huntsman video I put up on the, um, uh, I put up on the channel on my vlog. Hang on, let me just uh, see if I can find it. See if I can find the link. Oh, it's going to play now. So, right, copy the link. Copy, copy, copy. So if you're really excited about behind the scenes of the Appen, Appen Zella and the, and the spider hunt, then go and check that out. Um, that'll be fun for you. Uh, and yeah, all the support on the vlog channel would be great because um, I'm, I'm doing about two videos a week now. Uh, it's just great fun because it's something different other than cheese making. Cheese making, the videos, as you know, they're the same structure, but they have to be because that's what they are. But with a vlog, I can be freestyle and do anything and be a little bit more creative, I suppose, uh, and wave my hands around more and stuff like that and show the doggos and my family and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, cool. Um, Martin says, well, I'm late. I need to catch up later from Scotland again. Hope you and Kim will. Yes. Yes, we're an hour earlier because of Daylight Savings, Martin. We went to Daylight Savings today. Um, Nick says, I love your videos. Keep it up. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Um, Kevin says, I used a two-year-old Parmesan for eggplant Parmigiana, and it was strong but excellent. Uh, sounds delicious, Kevin, but Kim's not a fan of eggplant. <laughs> she'll tell you that if because I actually cooked her some once and she just didn't like it I made a moussaka which is a Greek eggplant lasagna um, and she wasn't a fan but I think I made it right uh, but yeah 
Mr. Epic says, what's your favourite cheese? Um, all the cheeses are my favourite cheeses. Karen says, I got the 200 Easy Cheese book on eBay used. Uh, it's an excellent book. It is indeed. It's, it's, for a beginner, it's a really good book. Um, Martin says, where is the email for the gallery photos? I want to send you a couple of pics. I've done a bell paisi, Persian feta, some queso fresco. I opened my Camon Brie tonight and it's delicious. Martin, if you go to the About tab, um, yeah, it's probably the best place. Go to the About tab of the channel. You'll find the email address. Yeah, and somebody, Nicola's already said it. Well done, Nicola. You beat me to it. Um, I thought that you have to go on a PC. You have to use a browser. You won't be able to see it on your phone. Um, yep. Um, yep, so that's where the details are. Um, yeah, his little partner says, show me email address. Yeah, well done, Nicola. That's exactly right. Um, okay, uh, looking for another question. Um, Saeed says, can we make mozzarella with only milk and vinegar? No, you can't, unfortunately. You can make ricotta and ricotta salada with milk and vinegar. Uh, and even crowdy with a bit of vinegar, if you really want to. Lemon juice is preferred, but uh, yeah. Um, but no, you can't make mozzarella with milk and vinegar. Um, Misty says, I want to send a get well card and a crocheted deceived scarf, but did not see a way to send it to you. Yeah, I don't have a post box. Uh, Misty, but you can shoot me an email and we can um, we can organise something, I'm sure. Uh, to Sir Boss says, I tried to make mozzarella, not quick, and at the hot bath stage for the stretching of my curds completely vanished and turned back into a liquid. Please can you tell me which stage may be doing wrong? Uh... <sighs> Uh, you you were disappointed you wasted 10 litres of milk. Yes, it's not an easy cheese to make. Um, I don't know, you should have, if you had uh, good curds and they were the right pH, then it shouldn't have vanished and turned back into a liquid. It depends on the sort of milk you used. If you're using ultra heat treated milk or ultra pasteurised milk, then that, that would happen, definitely. If you use fresh milk, then you probably would have been okay. But I'm not sure what happened. I wasn't there, unfortunately. I couldn't tell you the exact steps you took. Sorry. Uh, Manon says, Hi, Gavin. When you made cheddar, you added 2.5 mils of rennet in quarter cup. When I use a tablet, uh, what should I do? Are you... Oh, oh goodness me, Manon. Um, all rennet tablets have different strengths. So you're going to have to look on the packet and figure out how much tablet rennet to add uh, for whatever, how many litres of milk you got. Usually there's instructions on the packet because they're all different IMCU or International Milk Clotting Unit values. So not knowing the type of tablet you've got, rennet tablet, I could not even make a suggestion for you, mate. Okay, Kim's giving me the wind up. Sorry, um, no, Patricia, you weren't a super chat bully. Um, super chats are great. Uh, yes, we did fall back. No, we sprung forward um, because it's spring here. Uh, so, yeah, we did. Yeah, we went forward an hour. So that made everything backwards, if that makes sense. But anyway, um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Kim's put some links up there. So if you want to become a financial member, there's some links down in the description below. You can hit the join button for YouTube memberships where you get early access. And there's also a link for Patreon where you get other incentives as well, depending on the tier uh, that you support. Also, you can get some cool merch like this amazing cup, this amazing T-shirt, certified curd nerd, um, over at Teespring. And you'll see the merch in the merch shelf below anyway, but there's the direct link. Um, and uh, yeah, <clears throat> so... Uh, if you wanted to, if you're in Australia and wanted to pick up any uh, cheese making supplies, then you could do no better than popping over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au and picking up your supplies there. Now, don't forget there are, um, like I said, uh, about two vlog posts a week, 
oh, sorry I've got hiccups now um, two vlog posts a week I'm just trying to get back to my channel so I can give you the link um, there we are g'day ladies and gentlemen yeah we'll stop that um, right there we go there's the link to the vlog channel um, go and check that out if you haven't seen it that's a bit of the behind the scenes and some of the other things we do around here so you can go and check that out as well uh, if you haven't subscribed to that channel please do so it would make me very very happy anyway thank you for all the kind super chats to everybody who super chatted today and thanks for all the fantastic questions hopefully i answered them to your satisfaction some i couldn't today uh, because you really are gonna it's it's a big it's like going to the doctor you can't just tell him what's wrong he asks hundreds of questions before he comes to a diagnosis so you can call me the cheese doctor i can't really diagnose some things unless i've seen exactly what you've done and then i'll usually pick it up straight away so sorry about that anyway thanks for watching everybody and i will see you next time bye